Um, hey guys, I just want to put a disclaimer up here at the front. Um, this video is full of a lot of ranting. I do think there's some valuable stuff in here. I'm not going to really do too much editing in here. Um, it's literally just you, me ranting at you, and hopefully you get something out of it. But yeah, it would really, I would really appreciate it if you could watch all the way through. And um, just leave a comment down below about how you feel about what I'm talking about. Uh, so yeah, uh, I think that's it for editing, Tori. I, I have recorded this video. This video has just been a thing. But that's okay. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. I will see you in a minute. Or a second. I will see you in literally one second. <laughs> Okay. Hey. So today is like not anything that I've done really before, but I kind of had this on my mind. And so I just kind of want to like start talking about it a little bit. Um, I don't know. I just kind of want to talk about one of my favorite bands and, um, yeah, kind of like this idea about like bands selling out and like what does that mean um I'm pretty sure that this is like a conversation that is like maybe a very dated conversation like nobody's really talking about this um but I decided I want to talk about it today and I don't know if it uh doesn't hit then who cares but I just feel like talking about it so one of my favorite bands is a band called Paris. Um, I would say they're fairly popular. Um, but in a way, a little bit more up and coming. I don't know. Like I've heard them on MTV, you know, like on an episode of Catfish or something. So one of my favorite albums by them is called All We Know of Heaven, All We Need of Hell. I did like the new album that just came out. Um, it's called Use Me, I believe. But there's something about All We Know of Heaven, All We Need of Hell that Use Me doesn't really have. Use Me does a lot of like, it's very groovy, like it's very dancey, but still in that like alternative vibe. It's still in that alternative vibe, but it's not as like, based in rock as all we need of heaven all we need of hell is all we know of heaven all we need of hell and i noticed that as use me was coming out lynn donaldson who's the lead singer of paris i believe she also does a lot of the songwriting as well she did mention that you know if you guys don't like this album that is what it is um and i think that's an interesting new thing that a lot of artists feel the need to say like you know if you don't like the album sorry uh but one thing that I really like think about as um I don't know I guess as an artist myself is you know at the end of the day as artists and musicians we are making our music and or art or whatever to be consumed by other people. Um, and I think that's just something that we need to kind of come to terms with in general. Like if you're just making art for yourself, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I don't think most musicians uh, go out of their way to kind of like invest and uh, hold their craft uh, to not share it with people, you know, in terms of performing or putting out a recorded studio album, um, you want it to be your best so that um, your fans or whoever is seeing you kind of gets your best, um, or at least what you want to, like, I guess the way that your art is going to be, um, the way that your art is going to be received the best, I suppose. Um, you know, and I, I don't think that anybody goes into music um, not wanting to share it with other people. Um, art inherently is something that needs to be shared with others. Also, that's just 
the human condition. Like we exist to connect with others as well. Um, that being said, even though you make your art for other people to consume, it doesn't mean that what you make needs to be exactly what the people, what certain people want. Because it's always a small group of people who look at an artist's body of work and decide this is their only good portion, right? Like, because really the main thing that I was thinking about is like, is Paris having the, um, like the Lincoln Park effect? Like, do we have this group of people that are looking at this band and judging them only by their earliest body of work, which was white noise. Um, I generally, I genuinely believe that if you <laughs> compare All We Need of Heaven and all, uh, all We Know of Hell to White Noise, and you can't see the artistic growth between those two albums, you have no business speaking on music in general. Like... I understand that again, I did, did, we did a whole tirade about it. Um, art exists for people to consume, but that doesn't mean that artists need to make exactly what the, what certain people want. Cause at the end of the day, there is a wealth of material out there. You just need to, it's literally at your fingertips. You have a phone, you have a computer. You can go look for what you want. Your favorite artist doesn't need to make the album that you liked 15 times. They just simply do not. It doesn't make any sense. Um, also, artistically, it's draining. Um, like, and it would also be a very boring show. Like, if you were to go to a, um, if you were to go to a Lincoln Park show and it was all hybrid theory, all Meteora, like, the entire time, uh, it really wouldn't, it wouldn't be as exciting as it is. There's a reason why Lincoln Park was as big as they were. They were so innovative and they continued to innovate and people, and people decided that, uh, they didn't innovate the way they wanted them to. And that's just not fair. Um, now I would say with Lincoln Park, they, you know, Meteora, Hybrid Theory, and then Minutes to Midnight. I'm going to be honest. When I was 13 years old when, uh, date myself. Um, but I was like in, literally in middle school when Minutes to Midnight came out and yeah, no, I wasn't thrilled about Minutes to Midnight either when I was 13 years old, but guess what? I was 13 years old. As I get older, what I want from music changes, you know, it's no longer, you know, I'm no longer really looking for the type of music I'm into doesn't inform what scene I'm in and what people I hang out with. Um, because I feel like that's kind of what it was when you uh, were coming up in middle school and high school. Like the type of music you listened to was the type of, was the way you dressed and was the people you hang out with. And so it was a very big deal in that sense. Um, you know, if you didn't know certain bands, you could be like made fun of or ostracized. And I'm sure it's the same way now. Um, but I'm a little bit removed from that, so I don't really know. Um, but as I've gotten older, I've been able to like really come into my own. You know, I can sit down and drive around in my car to and listen to Ariana Grande and listen to Paris and listen to Movements and listen to Paramore and it doesn't matter to me. Uh, I just like what I like. Um, and I think it's very important um, for us as consumers of music to be able to decide, um, you know, Let's not berate musicians for not, I guess, making what we expect them to make. Uh, it's just not fair. Uh, like, do you dress the same way you dressed when you were in middle school? No. So why would you um, make somebody continue to be in that state of mind? Because uh, at the end of the day, art, like I said, is meant to be consumed by other people. But at the same time, it is an expression of your state of being at a certain time. So when you're, or at least for certain musicians it is, um, but when you're in a certain place and you put a body of work together, um, you can never really 
go back there because art can be therapy for a lot of people. And for me, uh, expressing how I feel through music um, is very cathartic in a way. So I couldn't see myself writing the same songs that I did a few years ago that I, that I couldn't write the same songs now because I'm simply not that person. <laughs> it's so strange because you hear artists say it all the time. Like, I'm not who I was 10 years ago, but like, shouldn't we all learn and grow a little bit? Like, shouldn't we all become new evolved version of ourselves? Um, and expecting a human being to not go through those changes is just simply detrimental to them is just simply detrimental to them as human beings um so maybe like if you don't like what an artist put out maybe you don't actually really need to say it like you can um if, if you don't like a band anymore you don't have to follow them anymore like you don't have to um comment on their Instagram and be like, you guys have changed. Like, well, you know, they should. Like, they honestly should. Um, so, you know, I think that for, for me as an artist, I don't, I don't know if I'm going to be the one apologizing for the type of music I make or, uh, the, or whoever I am, I don't, I don't think I intend to apologize for that. If I make something um, that people like and that I make something that people don't like, I don't, I'm not sure if I, if I need to care. Like, it's just, I don't know, catch you on the next one. Uh, I, <laughs> I just, I just don't know what, what else to say about that. Like, I don't know. I, and I think it's also important for musicians to be as self-actualized as possible like you know for people who literally put their heart and souls on the line in order to make a living because that's what musicians do put their hearts and souls on the line to make a living um I don't think it's for me to say uh whether something is uh, pleasing to my ear or not, like as if that's all that matters, right? Um, you know, and I also think being on the other side, being in kind of, you know, dipping my toe into the music production world, like I do think I have a better idea of like what all goes into it. And so I'm able to kind of appreciate certain things more. Like, even though I don't, I might not prefer a song for my personal musical taste, that doesn't mean the song is bad. Um, you know, I can uh, appreciate the, the way the singers are expressing things. I might not desire to be like that singer, um, but that doesn't mean that the way that singer is emoting is bad. It just means it's not what I prefer. Um, but I would see no need to tell that singer who has, you know, gone through the grueling process of recording, um, having to deal with like the daily woes of, of a singer like you literally wake up one day and you don't have the notes that you have to have like even my vocal coach told me today like you know if your guitar isn't hitting I don't know a b flat right um and it has something to do with like the action in your it has something to do with action in your strings you could just go to luthier luther whatever and you could have him fix your guitar when you can't hit a b flat that's just it. Like, there's nothing you can do about it. You just can't hit it. Like, that's just you. Um, but, you know, there are things you could do to, like, get yourself there. But at the end of the day, like, it's literally your anatomy. There's only so much you can do with it, right? Um, and so how? who am I to say, oh, your voice isn't pleasing to me, so it's bad. Like, how rude is that? <laughs> that's awful. So that's just... I don't know. 
Uh, that being said, All We Need of Heaven, All We Need of Hell is an amazing album. <laughs> uh, like it just does, it does so much. And, and what is super cool about Paris's body of work is that they start somewhere like the branding, first of all, is like, it, it's, it's, it, it's, everything goes together so extremely well. Like you can sit there and listen to Paris all day. And even though they may have changed since white noise, like you can listen to that and like not really be sure, um, as somebody who may not be a like extreme fan, what song is from what album but not in a bad way like it doesn't mean that everything all their stuff sounds the same it means that the way they approach their writing is so like the way they approach their writing is just so undeniably them they they've just really carved out their path like get chills thinking about it because it's just like the, the way they approach writing songs is just so, like I said, undeniably who they are as their band, as Paris. It's, it's just fantastic. I was thinking, I was kind of on the fence because, you know, before COVID and whatever, I was thinking about going to their, their they had a concert and they were going with, um, they were playing with Halsey, I believe, um, which like, honestly, how fantastic would that have been for their, their career? Yeah, I, ugh. So, anyway, there's just, like, a line of connection between all of their songs, um, and also the lyrics in All We Need, All We Know of Heaven, All We Need of Hell, um, whatever. I feel like I need a, I feel like I need a, a shortened version, like a nickname for it. Um, I'm gonna just call it Paris Album too. Um, so yeah, in Paris Album 2, basically what I'm trying to say is that the lyrics in um, Paris Album 2, or whatever I'm about to say, um, really seem to reflect what she was going through at the time, which is, that's just art, maybe, I don't know. But yeah, it, it reflects what she, moving on. Hey, so for whatever reason, um... I just had major audio issues uh this recording day i don't really know what happened but in any case what i was basically saying um throughout this whole rest of this clip is um you can hear the difference between lynn's voice between album one and album two and you you can tell that on album one uh producers or whoever was trying to get her to be that Haley williams or that Avril Lavigne or um, just whatever uh, female-fronted rock vocalist uh, type of sound. Um, and you can hear how she, uh, or how Lynn, you know, really comes into her artistic, like, singing sound. And, like, literally, it feels more like her. It feels more grounded. Um, and it sounds easier. It's It sounds uh, more authentic to who she is. Um and I was talking about how, uh, I was talking about how artists can be pushed to the point of literally not being able to speak because of the way that they're using their voice. Um, and like how, <laughs> how literally ironic is that? Like, you're being forced to use your voice in a way that isn't authentic to you. And in doing that, you almost cause yourself to not be able to use it anymore. Um, deep stuff, really. Um, but no, at the end of the day, what I was saying is uh, it's very important as an artist to be self-actualized by yourself. You're not making art. Like, yes, you are making art to be consumed by other people, but you're not. But your purpose isn't for other people. Your purpose is to make the art for yourself. Um, and you will find the people who will like your art for what it is. You don't have to make the art for whoever you think it is. You make your art exactly how you want it to be. And then you package it the way it needs to be. And then you bring it out, 
uh, to the world's or you put it out to the world of the people who uh, resonate with it and are on your wavelength will find it. Um, and that's pretty much what I was saying. But uh, yeah, like, yeah I, don't, I don't know what this video is, but I think I just kind of have to get this out. In uh, watching this uh, clip that's like, th there's just no sound. Um, I can tell that I'm very uh, passionate about whatever I'm saying. <laughs> So I do just want to include this last clip here. Um, I think you can kind of tell what's going on by the context, but um, yeah. To reconcile with yourself first and decide that your voice is your own and you're not going to try to be anybody but yourself. Um, yeah, uh, I don't really know where this video has... <laughs> where this video has gone. I just kind of wanted to rant for a second um, about just people whose opinions simply don't matter. Um, if you're an artist and you are finding it difficult to um, try to please your fans, don't, don't try to please them. Um, you want to please yourself first. And as an artist, you know what you want out of your music and you need to make what you want out of your yep and then uh you guessed it no sound there either uh yeah man who knows what happens uh that's life though uh but other than that i don't really think i have anything else to say uh if you made it this far thank you so much i really appreciate it if you could leave a like and uh subscribe to the channel it really means more to us than you think um i'll be back next tuesday or saturday or whatever this is going up with uh whatever I want to put up so I hope you enjoy it um yeah goodbye <laughs>